to study a plant known to the Inca as a divine leaf of immortality, coca, the notorious source of cocaine. And it was an extraordinary assignment because even though the efforts to eradicate the fields had been underway for over 50 years, long before there was a problem with illicit cocaine in Europe or the United States, all those efforts had nothing to do with cocaine hydrochloride and everything to do with the cultural values of those who revered the plant. But even though this plant had yielded our most important topical anesthetic, very little was known about the botany. Uh, nobody knew how many species yielded the drug. Nobody knew its point of origin. Nobody, incredibly, had done a, um, a, a, a nutritional study, even though it was a plant that was consumed every day by millions of Andean Indian peoples, men and women. We did know that in the time of the Inca, the plant was revered as no other. Unable to cultivate it at the elevation of the imperial capital of Cusco, the Inca replicated it in gold and silver leaf in fields that colored the landscape. And to this day in the Andes, no field can be harvested, no child brought into the realm of the living, no elder let placed into the world of the dead without some kind of reciprocal exchange of the energy of this sacred plant with the Apus, the mountain deities. No field can be harvested. And we did do the first nutritional study, and what we discovered absolutely horrified our backers at the US government. Yes, it had a small amount of cocaine hydrochloride, roughly analogous to the amount of caffeine in a coffee bean, and no one noticed the irony that at every drug abuse conference, all the narcs and DEA agents bolted for the coffee pot at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but this alkaloid was absorbed benignly through the mucous membranes of the mouth. The plant was also chock full of vitamins, it had enzymes that enhanced the body's ability to digest carbohydrate at high elevation. It had more calcium in it than any plant ever studied by science. So in one elegant, simple assay, we put into stark profile the draconian efforts that are still underway to this day to eradicate the traditional fields, and we showed that this was a plant that had been used with no evidence of toxicity, let alone addiction, by the peoples of the Andes for over 4,000 years. And so with coca as my lens, both literally and metaphorically, the ancient rhythms of the Andes came into being. And I became very interested in this idea of sacred geography. And again, I'm not invoking hippie ethnography. I mean, what does it mean to really believe that the earth is alive? What is, what is the relationship that other cultures have with landscape? Indian people are neither sentimental nor weakened by nostalgia. But they have a kind of traditional mystique of the earth that's based not on sentimentality, but on a deeper intuition. And that's the idea that the earth itself can only exist because it's filtered through the human imagination. This is the essence of the relationship that so many cultures have with the world.